Hello everybody, welcome to the Daily Sip. My name is Oliver and my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea and today we're going to dive into a new world and it is the hochicha, so-called roasted tea from the region of Kyoto originally. So when we talk about the Japanese green tea, as you might know, most of the tea is Yabukita Sencha or the typical Sencha, which is steamed green tea, which you're using uh, for your normal steeping. But there also exists a roasted version of it. So what actually happens in the process is normally you only steam the tea, um, which is then uh, coming out of the steam bath dried. And then you have the beautiful green tea like this one here. So you can see this tea is beautiful green. Um, this is slightly uh, longer uh, steam due to the fact, um, due to this it becomes a little bit more brittle, but all in all a wonderful green tea coming from Japan. But then in the 1920s people started actually to steam the tea not only in the first place, but also roasted in the later process. And this became a very soothing, very nice, low caffeine, non-bitter tea, which actually is a perfect tea which you can drink in the evening. So for me, for example, when I am coming home and I had a very loaded day or a strong day where I had a lot to do, I like to sit down with this tea and just enjoy its beautiful flavor. As you can see, compared um, to the green tea before, it is a roasted tea, so a dark tea, just uh, putting the other tea on the side. So you can see the color difference of this, these two teas. So it's quite impressive how dark the tea can come, become and it is actually um, getting much more roasty, chocolatey. Uh, sometimes you have a little bit of a caramel note with this tea. Sometimes even people refer to coffee notes, which they are getting out of these teas. So uh, quite interesting tea, low caffeinated, non-bitter tea. So you can uh, drink it really easy in the evening. You can also, kids can drink this tea um, due to the low caffeine content uh, or the nearly non-existing uh, caffeine content. It's definitely one of the lowest caffeinated tea um, besides Avancha and uh, maybe um, again Maicha, which I was already in, referring to in other videos as low caffeinated teas. Um, this tea mainly, so there are different um, versions of this tea. Um, so what you can see also is that this tea is made out of leaves and a little bit of stems. So you see here some stems like for example this one here. So a beautiful version of a stem. Um, and then you have also leaf parts, which is this one here. Mostly this tea is made out of bancha. Bancha, the more mature leaves of the tea plant, more mainly from the second harvest. So you can easily use it, uh, use kind of as a farmer, you can uh, use the second or even third harvest, which are a little bit lower in flavor, but still with the roasting, you get a beautiful caramel, chocolatey, ch uh, maybe coffee notes out of these leaves. What actually the difference is, is just at the end of the process, instead of drying, they're roasting the tea. And this can take up to one hour to maybe two hours. And it's around 100 uh, degrees Celsius, which is around 210, 220 Fahrenheit. So um, we are really talking about leaving them in, in hot temperature for a longer time, and then you can get this roasted flavor. The in-between of a Sencha and a Hojicha is the Kamairicha. So here we really talk about Hojicha roasted tea. This tea came mainly into vogue, especially into Kyoto. So if you ever have the chance to travel to Japan and you go to Kyoto, you will see you will have a lot of hochicha uh, being served in restaurants, in sushi bars or in uh, any places. People in Kyoto or Kyoto actually is known not only for the region, in the region is known for matcha, but also for hochicha. And this was mainly in the 1920 coming up, but then over time really developing into a nice tea. And that's why also most of the good uh, hochichas you get from um, uh, the region of Kyoto. But this one here is from another region. This one is from the region of Shizuoka. Mr. Kawabata, he's an um, uh, 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 organic farmer and non-certified. So um, what that means is that sometimes 
as the farmers are not too big and they have not a too big scale, they're not able to pay the fees for to be uh, organically certified, but he's non-pesticide free, uh, so non-pesticide free, he's uh, cultivating his teas without any pesticides or anything. So it's absolutely an organic tea. It's just not certified, just for you to know. If you're really looking for a certified tea, this one, for example, is not an officially certified organic tea, but it is organically cultivated. Good. So then uh, let's go um, and have a tasting of this tea. I use here five grams of the tea and then I'm going to brew it for around one to one and a half minutes at uh, 70 degrees Celsius, um, which is around 165 Fahrenheit. Then we're going to leave this in um, for uh, around one minute, a little bit longer. So uh, when we talk about hochicha, um, it is quite a unique taste. So it's very different from what you could, might know. It's not in this vegetal space. It's not in this grassy space where you find or it's edamame space maybe, um, where you find normally the Japanese green tea, also this typical umami flavor, so the savory flavor profile, which is especially coming out when you drink a shaded organic green tea or shaded green tea from Japan. There you often have these taste notes. When we talk about um, hojicha, we are really going into a space where we have around um, uh, taste notes around this chocolate and a little bit of dark roasted, uh, even a little bit black toasted uh, flavor profile. So you have a complete different world which opens up here, but it is also quite an affordable tea and it is really something which is beautiful to discover. And that's what I will do here with you with this Kawabata Hojicha. So let's have a last look. We are way over this minute. So we're around 1.30 now. So perfect timing for this one here. So you can see, oh, I was, ooh, I was nice with the water. Just let me have a sip here. Didn't pay any, uh, enough attention on the quantity. So you can see the color is really different. So when you have a typical green tea, you are in this green kind of a golden space. Here you are really in this dark, in this brown. It nearly looks a little bit like a black tea when you brew it. So it's quite, quite uh, different also from its appearance. And when I just smell it, the freshly done leaves, here you get a little bit of roasted flavor. Ooh. There's kind of a wooden, nice wooden flavor. Oh, there's a sweet wooden flavor with it. And you get a little bit of this roasted toast flavor, but not too much. So it's not too strong in its roasted aroma. So I will expect this tea, as I didn't pay too much attention before on the taste notes. So I don't expect this tea too much of a roasted dark or even burnt flavor. So I expect here a little bit of sweetness. Very beautiful. So you can see how the leaves are. They are really dark. And if I show them here to you, so you can really see that they're completely dark. Um, nothing kind of uh, in, in this green area really um, giving also this beautiful color then to the water. So let's go into the tasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a nicely balanced hojicha. Sometimes um, it really depends a little bit what you're looking for. You can go into a very roasted, really dark, nearly a little bit of this burnt um, taste profile, which some people might like. And then you have, on the other hand, you have quite nice, sweet, more caramelly, smoother flavors in hochichas and this one here I would say it's a nice in between so it gives you quite a nice roasted flavor but also there's a little bit of a hint of a sweetness a little bit of a honey a little bit of a caramel taste note mm -hmm. so the first taste note is clearly a roasted taste note that I get but then it goes over into a beautiful sweetness. I get a little bit nearly of a melony, like honey melon uh, flavor profile. So it's a quite interesting tea in terms of its balance. 
So if you're looking for kind of a, a, a good entrance into the hojicha world, this one here would be one of my suggestions because it shows you a little bit in which directions the hojicha can go and it has this beautiful balance between these, the, the taste note of this like smooth caramel, a little bit more this darker roasted flavor. It reminds me also a little bit when you're into coffee, um, you have a little bit of smoother flavor. So Ethiopia, for example, is a, a coffee in my experience, which is a little bit more into kind of a sweetness um, with the dark chocolatey flavor. And here I get a little bit this, when you have a slight cream on the dark coffee, sometimes they're building a little bit of a cream. And when you just take a sip of this cream, which is quite sweet and quite smooth, but still shows you a little bit of this coffee flavor, this I'm getting a little bit out of this tea as well. Mm -hmm. But it's fairly smooth. It's fairly sweet at the beginning, roasted flavor, but then it really shows you a nice sweetness. Now let's just do a second one. So hojicha is nice because you can do many different steepings. So I would say you could even go to four with this one here. And so when we go to the second brewing, then we just leave it in for some seconds. And now I used a little bit less water. You see it gets a little bit darker now. Clearly I'm using less water, so it has a little bit more space to brew into this beautiful golden kind of dark brown. Yeah, it's really looking like a black tea. So quite interesting. It's not oxidized, but it is roasted. Mm -hmm. So I get a little bit more of this roasted flavor profile. Gets a little bit smoother. You still have to get quite a good, good amount of sweetness with it. But in the second, definitely shows, shows a little bit more of this roasted flavor profile. Quite interesting. So now in the second, I definitely have a little bit more of this darker side. Let's say the darker side of the tea, a little bit more this um, kind of deep notes, which I'm getting. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit of when you're using a kind of toast bread and you put it on the barbecue and then you just burn it slightly. This is a little bit what I get. But still very sweet, very smooth. So for me, a really nice tea in terms of its um, smoothness. There's a nice balance, in the, especially in the first with a lot of sweetness and showing you already a little bit this roasted notes and now showing you more of the roasted notes. Maybe just to do a quick three. And then I can see if it shifts back a little bit to the sweetness. Now I'm curious. Mm -hmm. It has definitely more kind of this a uh, little bit wooden, burnt wooden flavor. And you can still see the color remains You can see that the color remains really, really. Mm. Mm -hmm. It loses again a little bit of this darker roasted flavor, leaving a little bit more space for the sweetness. It doesn't shift completely back into the, the, the first brewing, but you still have a very, very nice balance between these two. So I would say here, number three, definitely still good. Number four might start really to go down and lose a little bit of its flavor, but definitely a tea which you can drink at least for three times. And it is also very, very nice to do it with a cold brew. So this is for summertime, definitely something you could try. Good, so this was this. I hope you liked this small introduction into Hojitja. And if you ever have a question, please feel free to ask me. I'll be more than happy to answer it. And uh, I guess I see you next time. And please subscribe, like it, and ask us any question in the comment section. Thanks a lot. See you and bye-bye.